and then um, and then just a quick check in of kind of what the point of today is because design sprint is a fancy word and who knows what that means. Um, so hopefully at the end of today, after this workshop, you'll be able to describe the DFA design process at a high level, just kind of what it is and why we do it. Um, and then apply some some tools to address a real challenge area um, that then we'll continue learning about throughout the summer, but hopefully we'll have a good foundation today. Um, so our first little activity, we're going to do some mind setting. Um, we want to review some core values that we all want to practice today. So we have empathy. We want to be able to see things from other people's perspectives, humility, um, leaving out the ego and being open to new ideas, collaboration. We're all a team. So we want to work as a team um, and imagination. We definitely at DFA like to think big and outside of the box. Um, so we want to practice all of these values today but we're gonna take a minute to reflect on kind of which one you wanna individually focus on. Um, so choose one, we wanna practice all of them, like I said, but choose one that you're really gonna focus on and center for today. Um, write it on a little sticky note on your computer or wherever, throw it in the chat, just put it somewhere that you'll be able to see throughout this workshop um, so that you can remember like, okay, yeah, I'm focusing on collaboration today. So how am I being collaborative in this activity um, is kind of what we're looking for. So. We'll just have a moment for that. Feel free to throw in the chat um, which value you want to focus on for today. And hopefully we can have a good spread. I think personally, I will be focusing on imagination because I'm excited about the topic of the sprint. And yeah, Ross, we're on the same page want some out of the box thinking. Um, I think that we announced the topic, we're looking at how to make this a fun and engaging summer for you. So definitely want some imaginative ideas of what that could look like. We can't have yeah, all imagination though. There's a possibility there we go, that the ideas that you come out with could be implemented this summer with the YMCA as well. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a fun run through, but also a real challenge that we are looking for. Okay, Jordan, that's fine. We can, I'm glad that we have a lot of people interested in imagination today, because I think that will be important. Um, <laughs> but remember, we do want to practice all of them. Um, and hopefully that, just remember to keep that value at the top of your mind throughout the activities today. Um, and if we want to move to the next slide, I can send in the chat where we will be having all of these imaginative ideas and writing them down. Um, in this is our mural for today. So the link is in the chat. It's also if you're in mural, it's in the open rooms workshop little thing on the side. Um, so make your way. And then just kind of be moving from left to right throughout a series of activities. Um, people able to get in there. Is that link working? Yeah, we're good. Cool. Okay. Um, well done. Let me see. Are, is our YMCA team able to get in there? I don't know if I'm seeing you on the board. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Great. So that brings us to our little warm up that we're going to do today. Or, no, actually, first we're going to talk about some breakout room rules because we have some, not rules, roles. <laughs> we have some roles set out just to make this a little bit easy because as you can see, this is a really kind of complicated big mural board. Um, and we're doing a lot today, going through a lot today. So we wanted to give a little bit of structure. As you go into breakout rooms, we'll be doing different activities. It'll be kind of Gloria and I talking about what is this aspect of the design process and then doing an activity with it. Um, so in each of those breakout rooms, we're asking you to choose one person to decide to take notes. Um, just their job is to make sure that things get written down. They don't have to be the only one taking notes, but just so that there's someone who's keeping track of that. Um, you'll have a facilitator. So your design coach will kind of help guide you through the different activities we're doing. Uh, again, Gloria and I will kind of be your timekeeper. We'll keep you on track. There's a little time, as you can see on the mural board, there's some suggested timing for the activities and we'll send little announcements and have the timer going in mural um, just to keep things going. And then after every breakout room, make sure that you have selected one person who's ready to share, because um, we would love to hear kind of what you've been chatting about. 
So those are our roles for the breakout rooms. Now we're gonna do something fun and I'll stop, talk, stop talking. Um, we're gonna go up in the mural board to this upper left corner, which maybe Gloria, you can summon us all over there. Yeah, thank you. Use my um, magic powers to summon everyone. Mm -hmm. So welcome to the icebreaker. We're gonna do a little warm up of how, how would you use 100 watermelons? So we're gonna be up there. We're gonna take about two minutes to brainstorm, double click to make a sticky note, write it out, draw a picture, bring in images from the internet. Uh, we really wanna Beyonce budget, wild, crazy ideas for how you would use 100 watermelons. And yeah, Laura, question. Yeah, how, how I'm liking our spread of like, we're gonna use it to host a block party. We're gonna use it to raise money and donate to nonprofits, lots of composting. I didn't know you could, I guess you can compost with watermelons, that makes sense. But I'm liking, we have those ideas and then we have the, using them to bowl on as many lawns as possible. So we've got a good spread. I'm enjoying the, we definitely are centering imagination in this activity. Are there any other ones that people wanna shout out that look fun or that you're excited about? Um, whose is the one that's about making tiny little boats for squirrels that they can ride in? Cause that's my favorite. I want to know who's mine. That's my favorite too. <laughs> All me. Oh, that was, was you. Thinking, oh my gosh. I'm in New York right now. So I was thinking rats originally, but then I felt like I would be, I would rather okay. see a squirrel in a watermelon boat than a rat. Yeah. So I changed the. Yeah. What about this and like, watermelon skincare? I see someone put a fire next to that. That, that one was mine. I mean, oh. I don't really have a watermelon skincare, <laughs> but I'd be interested to see how develop. Yeah, I mean, people are using tomatoes exactly. and all sorts of other fruit. It's nice. hydrating, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, well, great. Thank you everyone for sharing. As more watermelon ideas come up, as I'm sure they will throughout this design sprint, that space will be there. So continue to add to it if something comes to you. Um, but for now, we're going to move on to an overview of the design process. Gloria is going to kind of walk us through what this thing is that we keep talking about. Just a reminder, hopefully this was a fun exercise to kind of get the juices, haha, -ha, watermelon, funny, juices flowing. But <laughs> we are going to be holding off on ideas until this after our break today. Um, so just know that design, we get really excited about having so many ideas about how to do things. Um, but that's not necessarily, we want to make sure that we're going through our research and doing due diligence before we start, start throwing this out because one person's squirrel watermelon boat isn't necessarily gonna fulfill the same need that someone's block party watermelons are going to. Um, so that's why we do research and Glory's gonna walk us through a little bit more about that. All right, so what is the DFA design process? Many of you might have seen this before and you probably already do this even if you don't think you have. So if you've ever solved a problem before or tried to, uh, in order to do that, you have to understand what the problem is first, right? And then you have to figure out the best way to address it. So relating that back to the DFA design process, the first three steps in orange are about understanding the challenge in your community. And then the last three steps in gray are about creating to address that challenge. So really the DFA design process or the design process in general, however you might see it, it's really about, it's a problem solving toolkit. These are things that you can use to better understand what's going on and creatively address issues that you're seeing. So I'll dive deeper into this in the next few slides. Um, first on the left, where you start by identifying the challenge space that you're working in. So I think for your team, it's related to mental health. That's the focus of the topic. And then once you know what you wanna focus on, like who's, who's in this space, what is the context, then you immerse yourself deeply in that community and actually talk to people who are at the heart of the issue. So community members, the people that are affected by uh, whatever you're focusing on. And then the third step is to take your learnings and reframe the issue at hand. So at DFA, we always say that we can't solve world hunger. It's too big and messy and incredibly systematic. 
But what we can do is collaborate with people on a local level to address specific issues. Um, again, we can't boil the whole ocean, but we can take a small piece of it and work on that. So after narrowing the focus of your design project, you can start thinking of wild ideas in this ideation phase. So with the 100 watermelon activity that we just did, you wanna think as big and wide as possible, like no ideas are bad ideas yet. And then through a narrowing down process, then we can uh, build out your idea and then test it with people to see if this is really gonna work to address the issue at hand. Um, so today's challenge is how can we help YMCA change makers have a fun and engaging summer at the Summer Design Institute? And the goal of today really is to learn the foundations of this design toolkit. Um, and that way throughout the summer, you'll be practicing and building upon the skills that you start to learn today. And the idea that you come out with, again, might also be able to be implemented this summer. So you can think realistically, what might you want to do for fun? Or think about wild ideas, like, I don't know, skydiving, jumping out of a plane with your YMCA peers. So I'm going to hand it off to Jane, and we're going to get started. Any questions so far? All right, Jane, it's all you. Great, thank you. And yeah, I'm skydiving doesn't necessarily, you guys could totally organize that. I don't know how unrealistic that would be. But um, also wanted to pause, we're gonna go through a lot of information throughout this sprint. So if you do want to take notes or have writing, write things down somewhere, go for it. But all this information, we'll have workshops every week going deeper into each of these parts of the design process. So it's gonna be a lot of information, we recognize that. Um, but no, it'll be coming up again throughout the summer. So don't worry about getting it all now. Um, so where we're gonna start today is Immerse. This is kind of the second part of Understand because we've already identified the challenge for you on this idea of how we can make the summer fun and engaging. Um, so we're gonna jump into Immerse. Um, where then if we wanna go to our next slide, um, this is really our research phase. So it's all about empathizing and learning um, from and with our stakeholders and the challenge that we're looking at. Um, and we talk about stakeholders as uh, the people who are impacted by your challenge. Um, and then your users as people who would be using your final concept as kind of two groups of people that we wanna make sure that we are talking to um, in, this, in this stage, um, because we are wanting to understand the challenge from multiple perspectives. Um, and lucky for us in this challenge, you guys are kind of your own users because you will be using whatever this fun and engaging idea is um, throughout the summer. Um, so we can learn a lot from each other. Um, and so, as we mentioned, this allows us to get a taste of what Immerse would really look like um, for you to come up with ideas that are informed, that are informed by and for, by and from each other, um, so that hopefully we'll be able to implement them this summer. So the first thing that we're going to do, get ready for our first activity, I'm so excited. Um, we are going to do, take a few minutes to brainstorm individually, um, some topics that you want to cover in your interview. This is kind of a best practice that we teach at DFA of how do you, interviews seem like they might be an easy thing to do. Oh, it's just a conversation and it is just a conversation, but it's helpful to have a little bit of structure. Um, so Gloria, if you want to summon us to the first little activity where we will be taking about two, three minutes just to brainstorm individually, choose your own square on the mural, um, your own little colored square um, to come up with some topics that you'd wanna cover in an interview with your peers today. Um, and just to clarify, you might be talking to someone from DFA, you might be talking to someone from the YMCA or one of the other change makers. So just keep that in mind as you're writing your questions. Um, but yeah, we're gonna take two minutes. Gloria, if you wanna start us on a little two minute time. And I see there's a couple questions. Um, Rio, would you like to share one of them that you came up with? Yeah, sure. Um, actually, one of the questions was really similar to what Jane just mentioned, like in a virtual format. Um, what kind of activities did you like and dislike? But also like thinking about considering like what things we can and can't do because we're virtual. So like what restrictions are kind of um, placed on that is kind of the direction I was going. Totally. Yeah, that's a really great question. Thanks for sharing. 
Yeah, and hopefully we'll all get to hear everyone's questions, at least some another person's questions, because we're going to do interviews with each other. Um, so before we go into that, I'll just go through a couple best practices. Well, tomorrow, tomorrow's Tuesday and when we're going through Immerse, so don't worry, we'll spend a lot more time talking about this, but just as a brief kind of intro, um, it's usually good to assign roles before an interview starts. In this case, you'll be the one asking the questions and taking notes. Um, there's a little notes in the box that you chose. There's a little section to take notes, so just make note of that. Um, we love open-ended questions. We really want to get stories from people and open-ended questions are a great way to do that. Um, and I always really like when I feel stuck to ask for whys and hows. Um, so if I don't know what a good follow-up question would be, asking why something, why they think something or how something happened can be a great way to get the ball rolling again. Um, so before we move into, we're going to go into breakout rooms. Um, I think that we, I started that activity a little early. Is this all of us? We all made it back? Yes, we have. Mm -hmm. um, okay, welcome back. Hopefully that was a fun, engaging conversation. Um, we're gonna ha you're gonna have a time to hear about everyone's interviews because we're gonna debrief them in a second. So hold on to those thoughts. Um, we're gonna go ahead, Gloria, if you wanna share your screen, I'm just gonna introduce the tool that we're gonna use to kind of debrief these interviews. And then we're gonna throw you into a room with your team um, you're gonna have a chance to talk about all the wonderful conversations that you had. Um, so we call this an empathy map. This is a tool that we use um, at DFA to help us organize the information that we collect in our research and frame it from the point of view of the person at the center of your challenge. Um, so I really like this circle in the middle and this is really what we're gonna focus on today, um, which is thinking about the pains and gains that your stakeholder or user might be experiencing. Um, these are the things that the stakeholder is maybe frustrated by, the things they're excited about. Um, and we really look to these as good opportunities for where you can work with um, the community to create something awesome. They're great design opportunities. Um, so these help to give more insight into the emotional and personal side of your user rather than just the background information that you might get um, and to really dive into why things happen rather than just what happened. Um, and so this is a really helpful tool for once you've had an interview, really diving into what was said and interpreting it um, and making sense of it. Um, and yeah, so I, what we're going to do is spend the next 10 minutes, we're going to put you into a room with your team and your design coach, um, where you're just going to have a conversation, take notes, choose someone to take notes on this chart. Um, Gloria, if you'd like to summon us to the correct area so we know where to go. Um, but we're going to just take notes on the highlights from your interviews and kind of start making sense of them in these different categories. Station, I would love to hear from, oh, there's our airplane timer saying that we're done. Um, if there is anyone from the YMCA team that wants to share out kind of what were the highlights, maybe one pain, one gain that you guys identified um, in this debrief conversation. Ria, you yeah, were quick on the unmute. Go for um, it. I'm happy to do that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, we kind of had our note taker and uh, facilitator and uh, speaker roles distributed. So we were good on that. But um, I think something that we talked a lot about was like getting to know people personally um, and like especially in a virtual format, like especially taking into consideration how that works in virtual format. I know Katie and I talked earlier about like not knowing what's going on behind the screen. Like there's always um, things that like you might just not know and it's important to take that into consideration um, while people are kind of going through everything and they might not be able to attend everything or um, be as engaged but in terms of games I think it's nice that we have like kind of substitutes for that um, with like icebreakers and small games and it's also like a more flexible schedule um, in terms of being virtual because I know Laura was mentioning how she's been able to like travel um, and have, have a fun engaging summer like on our own but also be able to participate here as well um so yeah that's kind of some of the things that yeah great thank you for sharing and I, yeah you never know what's going on behind the screen or even sometimes below the screen fun fact i am sitting in a sleeping bag because my legs are cold you wouldn't know that because we're on zoom um but now you do um but yeah, thank you so much. I think that those, hopefully that was a helpful exercise in really just kind of debriefing those conversations and kind of starting to make the connection between these individual 
stories that we were hearing from people and kind of these bigger themes and insights that we can take away from the conversations. Um, we do want to just kind of have the little caveat. This is a fun little graphic just to show that we have this big question of how can we help change makers have a fun and engaging summer through the Summer Design Institute. Um, and we talked to some of these people today, but we didn't talk to all of them. Um, and it's definitely important. There are other stakeholders in this challenge area. Um, and when we go through this actual project over the summer, hopefully you'll have a chance to talk to all of these little nodes in the big chart that makes up the people impacted by your challenge um, topic. Um, but just important to remember, we really focus mainly on students here, but there are other people who are impacted. Um, so when we do a real project, we really wanna try and make sure that all stakeholders are being engaged in some capacity. Um, so that's just our little caveat. Now, before we move on to reframe, um, which is the next stage of the design process after Immerse. Um, and so really reframe is all about reframing the question. So we have this one big question and it's about kind of really narrowing that down and defining what kind of outcome you're trying to make. Um, and the basis for this is how we, the basis for how we decide what to, re, what to reframe to focus on comes from our research. Um, and just like a little definitional thing on the next slide, Glory, we talk, I'm gonna say insights a lot, not sometimes a word that doesn't really feel like it means anything, but it's a really helpful term that we use at DFA to talk about these kind of overarching descriptions of a surprising, interesting, or important point from research. So that's kind of what we came up with through those pains and gains. Um, outside of the design sprint, we would have a lot more time to dive into that and come up with what these surprising, interesting, or important points from research are. Um, but just know that we're gonna kind of look to those pains and gains to guide us um, throughout this uh, sprint to really look at what are some design opportunities that we can focus in on as we narrow our scope in this next activity? Um, a tool that we really like to help uh, narrow scope, this simple strategy we use at DFA to help with reframe, um, is to literally just rewrite the question to focus on a narrower, more manageable scope. Um, so we call them how can we questions. You'll see that's how our original question was written. And we think about, think about these as guiding questions that focus your team by asking how can we help some populate user population in some place do some kind of behavior. So we'll get into some examples, but really want to frame this with uh, the understanding that it, the point of these questions is that they're generative. So they get our minds moving. Um, we like to use the example of, you know, like a vague movie trailer is boring because we don't, it's not make the question bigger movie. Um, but one that's specific enough without giving away the ending really gets our imaginations rolling, trying to fill in the blanks. And that's what, that would be the sign of a good how can we question. Um, so this is our framework. If we'll go to the next slide, we have this big overarching framework. This next slide will kind of show how the original question that we wrote fit into that. Our change makers, you guys are the users. Um, the behavior that we want is to have a fun and engaging summer and the location is our summer design institute. Um, so I'm going to go through now just a couple more examples just to get a little more familiar with this how can we format. Um, this is from, these are some examples of questions from a past DFA project that students did called Fruit Buddy. Um, so one question was how can we encourage kids to directly interact with healthy foods in the produce section? Another question this team came up with um, was how can we help parents to discuss healthy eating habits with their child in the checkout line? And then a third question is how can we provide kids with ownership over produce that their family picks in the grocery store. So as you can see, each of these questions are under a larger topic of healthy eating for kids, but they're very specific about targeting a different user and behavior. So, you know, designing for kids and designing for and with kids will be very different um, from trying to create something that's for parents. And so that's why we break down these different users, behaviors and places in our how can we's to make sure that we're really centering the groups that we are trying to design with and for, um, because different ideas will look very different. And this next graphic kind of helps, is a better explanation than me just saying different things look different. Um, we have this big gray circle that's kind of our larger scope that we like to start with. So today that's our, how can we help YMCA change makers have a fun and engaging summer. Um, and throughout your research, you can identify these smaller orange circles of possible areas to reframe, possible areas to focus in. Um, but then what we do here at DFA is kind of choose one of those narrower scopes to move in on um, and then have a very specific output that we end with um, that will be very different than one that would maybe be in one of these dotted circles, um, but they're all addressing the same larger question. 
Um, so this is just a graphic that we like to use to help explain that um, idea. So I'll pause for a moment here. How can we are kind of a new tool probably. So wanting any questions on what that means, what we're doing, we're gonna go into an activity right after this, but Ross, question. Yeah, you just cut out when you were doing your movie analogy and I was wondering if you could repeat uh, it. Yeah, and it's a great analogy. I got it from Ross and Kate. So of course I need to go back and share that, sorry. The movie analogy is just that we like to kind of talk about this idea that like a vague movie trailer, like what that doesn't get you excited about what the movie's about, right? But if they're, the trailer is specific enough uh, that it doesn't give away the ending, but that it kind of gets those questions rolling of like, okay, I have this information, but what's gonna happen it makes you want to see the movie, right? And that's kind of what we want in a how can we question where it's generative. It's going to get your mind moving and it's going to bring up questions and bring up ideas for how you can um, brainstorm around a narrower problem space. So the sign of a good how can we is that it gets your mind moving just like a good movie trailer does. And then a follow-up question. What is a bad how can we example? Oh, a bad how can we example? I might need some help with this because I'm really good at how can we's, but I'll try and think of one. I think that a bad how can we would be one that isn't very specific. So we we have this original question, you know, the how can we help YMCA change makers have a fun and engaging summer through the Summer Design Institute. And so and we really, the focus is to really narrow down. So a good how can we should be connected to your research those ideas of users and places and behaviors should be very tied to what you learned in your research. Um, and we want it to, yeah, just be very generative and specific without giving away. We don't, your question shouldn't hint at what the actual output will be. So we wouldn't wanna, uh, how can we for today wouldn't be like, how can we, how, how can we create a game that will make the summer fun? That's not using the format, but that would be a bad, how can we? because we don't necessarily know if a game is gonna be the right output. Um, we wanna leave it broad enough that we can have lots of different kinds of ideas, um, but specific enough that it gets our minds moving. Did I miss anything? I can give an example of, a, of the narrow scope that I'm thinking about. So going back to our larger scope, how can we help change makers have a fun and engaging summer? Maybe one of the narrow scopes could be how can we help change makers uh, bond with each other over Zoom or like learn, learn more about each other individually and create fun memories together? At least that has a little bit more specific, you know, it kind of defines what engaging means. And in my case, it's, uh, it's the bonding aspect. How do we get people to relate to one, one another? Um, Great, thank you, Glory. And yeah, so that is where we're headed. Um, if we, yeah, there's our next slide. We're basically going to take the next uh, 10, 15 minutes um, to do some individual brainstorming. We'll throw you into your breakout rooms and we'll kind of send these announcements like Glory was doing before. Um, but we're gonna do some individual brainstorming over what, over what are some users, places and behaviors that we wanna focus on in these qu reframed questions. Uh, take some time to work as a group to discuss those ideas and come up with a question that you want to focus on. Um, and then finally come up with your final how reframed how can we statement that you want to focus on today as a team. Um, so that is our plan. How did that brainstorming how can we session go? I think we we ran out of time a little bit towards oh. the end. Um, okay, gotcha. Um, does someone from the team want to share out how what you guys talked about and what are some of the themes that you came up with for these how can we statements? Yeah, we talked a lot about collaboration and communication, you know, how we can best communicate good vibes over, you know, these virtual platforms as you know, we can't actually be in person. So how can we get to know each other and like, truly have these good times over um, Slack and whatnot, whether it's, you know, getting involved in the fun questions everyone asks, um, <clears throat> as well as co collaborating over these virtual platforms, whether it's Mural or Google Docs and whatnot, just being able to work together. So that's kind of where we were discussing. We were just about finalizing it and summing them up because a lot of ours cool. did together. So Jordan gotcha. was just saying his, how can we think? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, 
those are all great things. It sounds like a lot of the emphasis is on collaborating and working together with each other as a means to, and like, you know, emphasizing the good vibes through that collaboration as a way to have a really engaging summer. And it seems like, I mean, you guys already have that. You, you're getting along so well. Um, so this pretty much, uh, the next thing that's gonna happen is a break. We're gonna have 15 minutes for our break. So go take, you know, eat some snacks, go to the bathroom, lay down, stand up, stretch, whatever you need. We are gonna come back at, let's see, 15 minutes. That would be 12.40 Central Time. So whatever, whatever hour it is, but at the 40 minute mark, <laughs> we'll come back here. Uh, what we're gonna do is just play some music during this break so that you know it's still going on and we haven't just disappeared into the ether. And then when we come back, we'll introduce this next ideation phase. And to start that off, um, once you get into your breakouts, you can, you know, have your discussion and choose your final how can we after we come back from the break. And that way you have some more time to really come up with something that feels good with your team. All right. Sound good? We'll see you at 1240 Central Time, whatever the 40 minute mark is. See you soon. Back. Hope y'all got a good stretch session in there and we are gonna jump into ID8. So let me just share my screen. There we go. Okay, coming right up. So here we are, we had our break. And first things first is a way to revisit our values today. We already practiced some empathy, seeing from other people's perspective through our interviews. We've been collaborating together so far. And in this next half of the workshop, we're really gonna focus on humility and imagination. So thinking outside the box, coming up with ideas. Um, you'll have time to refine your how can we, but first I'm going to introduce you to ID8. Um, if you haven't guessed already, this section is about coming up with ideas, ID8. And this is really the most fun phase for me because the sky is the limit here. We're going to be brainstorming in these next steps to come up with lots and lots of ideas and explore possible alternatives. Um, but first, some rules of brainstorming that I'm going to go over. The first one is quantity over quality. So you can't tell what a good idea is until you have 100 worse ideas next to it. It's really hard to tell. So in this part of the process, you win by having the most number of ideas. Think of it that way. Um, next up is to defer judgment. So this isn't really the time to be judging or criticizing your ideas or other people's ideas. The first part is really about thinking big, thinking wild ideas. And then once you've done putting your ideas out there, then we can sort of narrow down afterward. So right now, just focus on generating ideas. Also think about building on other people's ideas. Keep an open mind and say yes and add on to other ideas. And the wilder the ideas, the better. You never know what might actually sound crazy, but be an excellent thing to strive for. Like some of these 100 watermelon ideas were really, really good, even though they were wild, but you know, we all had a favorite. Um, and the last thing is that ideas are hard to convey, right? You know, you can explain how it works in words, but try drawing them out to show people what you're talking about or use icons or use some sort of like image that you can share to represent what your idea is trying to convey. Does that all make sense, Gucci? So um, you just started creating some how can we's and in your mural space, what you're gonna do is uh, start by finishing up, selecting what your top how can we question is and then copy that question over to the ideate phase where Jane is helping you navigate to. And in the next 15 minutes, you'll start 
brainstorming ideas that answer your question, essentially. So also remember to be specific to the person or the, you know, the stakeholder group that you're focusing on in your question. So if you're uh, focusing on high schoolers, then don't come up with ideas that relate to teachers. And, uh, and then you're going to think broadly about your ideas and then maybe 10 minutes in, you're gonna narrow down and choose one final concept that we are going to then build and test. I have a right. question. I'm oh, sorry. Yes. Um, we never like finalized our how can we statement. So um, what should we do for the how can we? Like, should we just choose one of the four that we have or what do you recommend? Yeah, how about, I think your team can take five minutes just to continue brainstorming. And everybody, so it looks like the mural was popping. You all had so many cool ideas um let's share out what your how can we how can we statement is and your top idea and sort of explain how you got there and maybe yeah, someone so, who hasn't yeah. spoken before can share if that's okay jordan are you up for it so our how can statement is how can we help change makers communicate slash collaborate openly and accessibly in order to relate good vibes in a virtual format. Um, so our top idea, which is under our theme activities, which is a virtual escape room. And I think we just got that because like everyone loves activities, of course. But um, I just think I'm not sure exactly how we got there. I just like everyone just love that idea. Um, nice. Yes. Yeah, that's perfect. I think it's great that you were able to cluster them into like, you know, you can achieve this communicating and collaborating to relay good vibes through, you know, either activities or tools or norm setting. And that sort of you know, the open-endedness of this brainstorming activity is essentially to help you think about all of the different ways it can happen and not just immediately go to one idea, one outcome. So I love how you guys were able to group that together. And virtual escape room sounds amazing. I would love to join. <laughs> okay, so great work. And now I'm gonna do a quick screen share to walk us through this next activity. Share screen, here we go. Okay, so we just did our brainstorming and now we're gonna build and test this uh, virtual escape room. So these next two steps go hand in hand and I'm just gonna explain a little bit. First is about building. So this is the phase where you create artifacts, which could be a drawing, a model, a map, anything that can convey your idea to other people in a way that's more than just words. So your model, your prototype, the thing that you'll build should be actually as simple as possible. Think of it as like, um, you know, something you can build within a week or in 30 minutes for this workshop. I mean, a little bit less than that. We have maybe 10 minutes slotted for you. But maybe a good example is like, think of when someone forgets to do their homework and they bring in a stick figure drawing that's kind of the goal here, where you want to use super scrappy drawings, like the scrappiest way that you can communicate your idea as a conversation piece to tell the story of your idea. So you're going to build a thing, a really scrappy thing. And then when you show your scrappy thing to your peers, you want to invite their feedback so you can learn more about how the person would actually interact with or use your concept. So, you know, do they like it? Would they act differently in this scenario? Are there things they wanna change about your idea? The purpose of this, uh, this next phase test is to get feedback from your stakeholders and then improve your idea based off of the feedback that you heard. Um, and then you revise your idea and you can make it all the better. So in the same way that a picture tells a thousand words, the thing that you build should be able to explain your concept better and faster than if you just verbally explained it. So some things to think about are, what is the simplest way to show your idea, not tell it? 
And what are the biggest questions and the knowns about your idea? So this next example, I'll give you an example of what a build and test session looks like in real life. So we're going back to this Fruit Buddy project. And the first idea they had was a produce bag that attaches to a shopping cart. It's eye level for kids to interact with and basically pick, kids can pick their own fruits and veggies in the grocery store and put them in this little pouch. And this would, the idea is that this will encourage healthy eating for kids. So you can see here, there's a, you know, a drawing of the idea. It's labeled, you can see there's a handle and different colored pouches for different fruits and vegetables. One way, so right now this lives as a concept, you know, a sketch on paper. And as we're thinking about testing it, one way is to bring this drawing to kids and just show them and see what they think. Um, another way could be to actually create a super scrappy model of this idea and show that to the kids. So in these picture examples, the students on that project borrowed a shopping cart, created some cardboard and plastic bag mock-up to represent the produce bag, and they put it in front of a child to see how that person is actually going to interact with it. So you know, going back to the prototype, this prototype is literally anything that you can show to a person and get feedback. It's a conversation starter. And so while we're not in person right now, we can still test your ideas virtually through a storyboard. And a storyboard is exactly what it sounds like. It's a board that tells the story of your idea. It's a really great way to outline what the experience of your idea would be like. And so um, looking at the screen, each square on the right tells a snapshot of what's happening. So how does this virtual um, escape room, how does it start? What happens in the middle and how does it end? That's kind of how you'll describe the experience. And this is a tool you'll be using in the future as well as a conversation starter to share your ideas with people. So I'll walk you through an example of the storyboard format and then you're going to create your own storyboard with your team. All right, so this first step, the idea that we're using is along the same lines of healthy eating for kids, but instead of a food pouch, it's a healthy food truck, a food truck that has healthy food in it that is in the park during summertime to give kids the opportunity to eat healthy while they're not in school. So, <clears throat> so this first step describes how people hear or learn about your idea. So in this little like sketchy icon here, um, let's imagine you and your family hear about a healthy food truck that's going to be in your local park next week, um, and it's posted on a flyer outside of your little brother's elementary school. So that's how it gets started. And then in the second step, um, this describes how do people start to engage once they're interested in your idea. So in this case, um, you already love the park, so you plan a family outing at the same time that the food truck is going to be there. Um, and that's how you're going to show up at the park. In this third uh, phase of the storyboard, this is like the main experience of the idea. So when you arrive at the park, the food truck is there and it's filled with healthy food that looks really delicious and affordable. And there's a nice guy at the stall who asks your little brother what he wants to eat. So that's like the middle of what's happening. And then fourth, what happens at the end of this experience? So your brother chooses some apples and peanut butter to buy and it looks really delicious and he's really excited to eat it. And last but not least, this last step is what happens to get people to come back to your idea and experience it again. So, you know, your brother loved the apples and peanut butter so much that he wanted to go back to the park and buy healthy food again. Um, the guy at the stall was really nice and your brother, you know, maybe has a crush on him. You know, that happens. So in this example, in the same way that a picture tells a thousand words, this thing that you build, the storyboard, should be able to explain your concept a little bit more than if you just, you know, verbally shared how it works. So in this next phase, you're going to, right, 
Okay, so you're gonna storyboard. And then in addition to the storyboarding, you're gonna come up with three questions that you wanna ask to get feedback from. So one, one example of that question could just be like, what stands out about this idea? And your team will make two other questions in addition to that to then ask in a feedback session. So now we're gonna take 15 minutes to uh, send you back to your teams and you can probably split up some roles to storyboard your idea and create some interview questions. And when we come back, we're going to split up the rooms again so that each person in your team can actually um, experience the feedback part. So you'll be able to explain your storyboard to a partner and get some feedback on it. All right, any questions? Says so it's five, four, three, two, one. I'm loving this planet icon that you guys found. It's really cool. Did they find that or did they make that? They found it. <laughs> All right. So we in the other room have been watching you build your storyboard and it's it's a very exciting journey and I can't wait for this next phase. So what we're going to do now, you have your interview questions, you have your storyboard. What we're gonna do is one-on-one -on -one breakouts where each person in your team is gonna be able to talk to someone else, either DFA National or your design coaches and have a feedback session for 10 minutes. So as the as the creators of this idea, you can walk your partner through the storyboard and then ask your questions and get feedback and have a conversation from there. And take some notes either in the mural or, or on paper of how they're feeling, what they're saying about your idea and make a note of what you would update about your idea or change to make it meet their needs better. So uh, Joy is gonna use her magic wand and split us up into one-on-ones. And for 10 minutes, you're gonna have your feedback session. And when we come back, we'll all be able to share what we've learned, how we might change our idea, and we'll wrap up from there. Yeah, so and just a logistical thing. When I share storyboards, I like to take the first couple minutes to just read through the story. Um, Cause sometimes it can be, you don't wanna rush. You wrote a beautiful story and we wanna hear it. So take your time, we have 10 minutes. Um, take your time to read through the story and really take a look at the images that you made because it's a really helpful touch point to get feedback on. Yeah. And one other thing is to establish the context of your idea. So maybe you can go back to your how can we statement that you're trying to, you know, you're trying to address and that helps situate how your idea is going to work to address what you identified earlier. That feedback session was super fun and really insightful. I hope you learned some interesting things about your idea. Um, I think what we can do now is each person on your team share out one interesting thing that you learned and how you would update your idea based on that feedback. So I'm gonna choose you, Alora, since you were in my team. Yeah, definitely. So um, with Glory and Joy and Jane, we kind of talked a lot about this idea of the thematic content. So making it more, I guess, realistic or applicable to the different problem area that they are trying to work on. And so not only just having this, you know, um, space theme, but also issues like Glory said, like, you know, about rising sea levels, like even applying it to like actual like ideas that maybe a team is trying to solve. And so just like changing up the content and having other scenarios or possible ending scenarios, depending on what the team is trying to accomplish or how they want to go about accomplishing it. So that's kind of what we talked about. And I have to agree, you know, it gives you more ideas and more opportunity to have, you know, different scenarios and engage different groups. So. Awesome. And, and I'll say Alora did a really great job tying this whole like walkthrough of the storyboard to the how can we and how it like really builds in this collaborative and communicative culture within the team. So great job, Alora. Um, how about Rhea? How was your feedback session? It was great. Um, I was with Katie Ross and Sparkle. And something that we talked a lot about was like 
really um, focusing on those like interpersonal connections. So do you focus on that individual having like prompts where there's like individual responsibility and then coming back as a team and then kind of sharing and creating and thinking together um, and just like splitting that up. Like when do you have a team effort? And I know Sparkle also mentioned like Among Us, which is like more like everyone's individual, but then you have to like collaborate. Um, so like adding prompts like that, um, which is pretty interesting and neat to think about, especially like Alora mentioned in like a more um, superficial, I guess, environment. Cool. Spark Sparkle, you were in, in Ria's team, right? Really? Yeah. Sparkle? Yeah. Um, was there anything that stood out about Ria's facilitation of that feedback? Well, one thing that Ria let us do, she let us go ahead and sort of like go through the storyboard on our own just to sort of take in the information. Um, and then we were like able to ask her questions, but she definitely set up a good idea about the teams wanting to sort of like compete and share it out with other YMCA locations, which I thought was really good. Awesome. And last, oh, thank you, Ria, for sharing. Last but not least, Jordan. Um, so I was with Yuni and Kate, and basically we talked about um, how can we edit like the engaged section of our storyboard in order to kind of just like relate more back to the change mark change makers in themselves, kind of like how where it was talking about how um, rising sea levels, et cetera, stuff like that. And yeah, we also talked about how we will be able to um, edit like our engage section in order to better fit or adjust for a time where this will be being used. So if it would be being used in like the beginning of the program or in the end of the program, how can we edit mm -hmm. that and be more beneficial to the change makers in themselves? Gotcha. Yeah, that's a really good point you bring up because maybe maybe like the the whole experience would be different if it's at the start of this project versus at the end. Really like that. Great directions. Um, and Junhee and Kate, was there anything special about how Jordan facilitated that feedback session? Jordan is really good at storytelling and like. I don't know, Jim, he used the word immersive, but it, it really like highlighted the ways that this idea is kind of like you enter a different world, you take on different mm -hmm. worlds. So I really, I felt that. Yeah, that's that's an awesome skill to have. Yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, Jordan really, uh, although like we were there in the process, uh, in the in the process of like them, them making the storyboard, Jordan really sold the idea. Awesome. Wow, what a fun time. It would be really amazing if we can all participate in this escape room activity together. Um, before we wrap up, I have a couple more slides to show you. Um, so here we go. So here's the DFA design process again. And you all just went through a super fast version of this where you identified, well, we identified what the challenge was, but you immersed uh, deeply in interviews with each other. You reframed your question and narrowed it down to something really specific about communication and collaboration. You came up with some crazy ideas, clustered them, and then built a storyboard and then tested that with people to see, you know, what feedback you could get, what you could learn from others and how your idea might adapt to be even better and serve more people. So I am honestly so impressed with what you guys came up with in these past few hours. And just imagine what you can come up with over the entire summer when you have you know six or eight weeks to actually build out an idea and test it with people and iterate on that. So maybe in the chat, I would love if everyone can just type the biggest takeaway that you had from today's workshop. What was the most interesting thing that you learned or what did you get out of today's workshop? Just take a minute to type that in the chat. Um, and the DCs, feel free to type something in too. I'm sure everyone had something to learn today. Jane, if you could monitor the chat, that would be great because I have no idea where it is on my screen right now. Thank you.
I got distracted by Joy's cat that just jumped up on her lap, but we do have, Laura has shared a takeaway being learning and listening to each other's skill set and allowing them to utilize their strengths. I think that that, yeah, that's a great, that's just a teamwork thing. Um, that's definitely good to figure out earlier in the process rather than later, because um, that's how we get good ideas that come together by all working to our strengths. Um, time boxing activities helps move things along. Yeah, hopefully those little timers were helpful. Um, focus on empathy and learn about approaching immersion and feedback by understanding different perspectives. Um, Ross, there are many ways to use a watermelon. I was also shocked. Um, yeah, lots of different interpretations of storyboarding. We hopefully next iteration of this will have some better instructions on what that would look like because we saw um, Laura, we talked about how there was maybe some confusion there. Um, so thanks for sticking with us through that. Um, coming up with how can we's, yeah, those are, it's a, how can we's are a really, really helpful tool. Um, and squirrel boats should be a thing. That's my takeaway. Cool. All right. And um, I want to leave you with this idea that what we learned today was really just practice for the real deal. You know, we spent three hours together. That's super, super duper fast. The design process is not going to take that it's not gonna be that quick in real life. And so over the summer, you're gonna be talking to real people, not just your peers, but people who will be affected by your challenge space. And you're gonna get feedback from them too. You won't just be talking to folks from DFA or you know, each other, but um, you know, parents and friends of high schoolers and everyone else in that sort of community space. So lastly, what is next? I'm going to hand it off to Jane to close this out. Yes. So I will send in the chat. I think you guys got this over Slack for the last workshops, but we'll send it now for now. This is just a quick feedback form that we would really love your thoughts on this workshop and kind of any lingering questions that you have just so we can continue to iterate as we do in design and make things but make the summer better for everyone. Um, so that's in the chat. Take a couple minutes to fill that out. And then just to look forward, the slide said next Monday, but this is actually happening tomorrow. We're going to have a workshop where we're talking about Immerse. So going back to that very first part of the sprint um, and really diving deep into some different tools and ways to think about doing that research and then doing it. Um, so I can maybe, this could also maybe be a moment I could send or glory or joy sending the link to the engagement form. If you have people in your communities that you want to talk to, um, that you're interested in connecting with around your problem space, now that you know that you're working around mental health, feel free to send out that form so that we can start helping to coordinate interviews because we design is about talking to people and we want to help you talk to people. 